Okay, good morning. This video is going to be a little different than my usual stuff because I'm gearing up to plant corn and on this piece of property that I'm on, I haven't been there farming in 18 years. So somebody else has been there and what I'm going, what I'm doing is pulling soil tests to find out what is actually there and what I actually need to do to the soil to get a productive crop out of it. Now, if you're a longtime farmer, you already know this stuff. If you're a young guy looking to get into farming and there's some ground available and nobody really wants it, nobody wants to pay the rent that the property owner is uh, asking, the, the test is generally free from your fertilizer company or plant. And uh, what you'll do is you'll go out and you'll pull those samples, you'll take it to the fertilizer plant, see what's there, and then you can negotiate your rent for what is there. Um, and that's just the way it's done. Uh, if you get a piece of property that's going to cost you $600 in lime fertilizer and everything else just to get a, a mediocre crop out of it, uh, rent should be fairly low. And that's usually why people will rent them out that way. So sit back and enjoy the video. And don't forget the end where I read a bunch of comments. There's a few. Okay, good morning. This video is going to be a little different than my usual stuff because... I'm gearing up to plant corn and on this piece of property that I'm on, I haven't been there farming in 18 years. So somebody else has been there and what I'm going, what I'm doing is pulling soil tests to find out what is actually there and what I actually need to do to the soil to get a productive crop out of it. Now, if you're a longtime farmer, you already know this stuff. If you're a young guy looking to get into farming and there's some ground available and nobody really wants it, nobody wants to pay the rent that the property owner is uh, asking, the, the test is generally free from your fertilizer company or plant. And uh, what you'll do is you'll go out and you'll pull those samples, you'll take it to the fertilizer plant, see what's there, and then you can negotiate your rent for what is there. Um, and that's just the way it's done. Uh, if you get a piece of property that's going to cost you $600 in lime fertilizer and everything else just to get a, a mediocre crop out of it, uh, rent should be fairly low. And that's usually why people will rent them out that way. So sit back and enjoy the video. And don't forget the end where I read a bunch of comments. There's a few. Okay, so this is today's start of the video. I, it's bright and sunny. Um, <laughs> got lots to do today. One is a very important thing, and that is to pull soil tests from the farms that I'm going to be putting corn in. I have about 200 acres that is slated to have corn into it, and in order to do a good job of growing corn, I actually have to make sure that the soil is correct, you know, correct. Uh, I'm really going to push this corn to the limit uh, as far as I'm concerned and as far as New Jersey's uh, corn growing is concerned. Uh, I'm going to push it to the limit per se for both corn grain and the fodder. For the fodder. Uh, Got to have fodder. If you don't have fodder, uh, corn isn't worth growing in my honest opinion. I uh, just got to increase the amount of money that I get off the farm, uh, these farms, to uh, offset the lack of money that is in the... Uh the lack of money that is in the grain business right now. So the last time I looked at uh, grain prices uh, in the Midwest, it was like $3.60, give or take. I uh, had a negative basis. And the uh, here on the East Coast, we were a little over $4 a bushel, um, like $4.10, $4.15, I believe is what it was. And, uh, you know, that's not terrible. That's actually pretty good. But the problem that I have is hauling. I don't have a grain elevator within a few miles of the farm here. I actually have to drive it 60, 70, 80 miles away. Uh, whether they're taking it at the port or whether they're taking it in, uh, say, Lancaster or, you know, something like that, Lebanon town, Lebanon. Okay, so today it's starting to rain, so we were, we were going to walk it, but I decided not to walk it. Yeah. Two more samples to do on this. And I'm going to show you how we're doing this. Here. Wait a second, Joe. Hold on. All right, so what we're doing is we're driving across the field. This has had soybeans in it uh, last several years. Soybeans, wheat, soybeans. But 
generally two to three years of soybeans and then a field then that will do wheat and uh, anyways go ahead and stick her down in there there you go there's your sample your core sample I don't know if anybody ever shows this but we have had this that was actually a Christmas gift to my father my grandmother got it for him a long time ago and if you're wondering it is the Oakfield Apparatus Company made in Oakfield Wisconsin so that's where that came from but it was a Christmas gift to my father now a lot of people look out across this field and they think oh wow that's a beautiful field and uh, it is this is my grandparents farm my grandfather had cows in there my mother was raised here I'll show a little bit more of that later I have showed it in the past but what I can see on top of the soil is concerning and I actually called and ordered uh, I ordered lime already but this is moss and in this area, well, in my experience, when you have moss growing on your ground, it's a pretty good indicator that your soil pH is pretty pathetic. So what I've done is we're pulling these soil tests, but I want to get the, uh, I'm going to be chisel plowing this stuff here pretty soon. And because I'm going to work the ground, this is going into corn. Now, guys, it's happening. I'm growing corn again. Um, I already I called and I ordered some lime to get on the ground before I chisel plow and uh, I'm only putting a half a ton to the acre to chisel in and then when the te when the test comes back it's gonna take a couple weeks to get the test back so when that test comes back we're going to uh, take the recommendation and if it's gonna if it's gonna need another ton of, they're probably gonna recommend a ton and a half to the acre which is in my experience pretty much standard operating procedure on ground that is uh, sour. So I'm gonna put a half a ton and if they, if they ask for a, half, a ton and a half to the acre, I'd probably come back with another half a ton before I uh, work it up with the, uh, with the disc. Now, we are going in a zigzag pattern. That is how we've done it for years. Joseph, this is your first experience my doing first this? Experience. Okay, his first experience doing this. Now. I, I know I've showed this before, but anyway, so what I do, and it's probably not 100% accurate and it's not as time consuming as most people would like to do it. Um, generally in a field this size, this size, this field is only 23 acres, 23, 12, 20, no, 25, 12, and 22 in the next one, and the next one back there is like 10. Um, what you would normally do is split the field this size in half and you would do a zigzag to the center of the field all the way up and then zigzag all the way back. But I don't feel that that's necessary because just because so what I'll do is I'll pull from the corners from the corners and then I'll zigzag three or four times across all the way pulling a sample each and every every so often you can see the difference in the soil the color difference yeah and the color difference all right so here we go okay so I got Joe right there you see him in the mirror it's starting to get sticky from the rain so what we're going to do is we're going to see what kind of a farmer has been on this ground since 2002. Um, I was the last, in 2002 was the last I did anything here. And like I said, this was my grandpa is my grandparents' place. Um, my uncle stopped farming in 2001. I did work here in 2002. And... Uh, I didn't put lime on and he said that he hasn't put lime on since maybe the late 90s so there was the late 90s uh, there hasn't been lime and I don't know what the uh, I don't know what the uh, the former farmer the person that was farming it before ended up doing with it uh, I know they only put soybeans on and in and putting soybeans in is okay it's just uh, it's just you have to uh, feed the soybeans and feed the soil um, but I don't know he had wheat in here and I don't I knew that his uh, his uh, I guess it would be his grandfather in law that farmed this before him he was a pretty decent farmer I couldn't complain about what he does or he did he's dead now but uh, 
you have to uh, wonder what's going on and that's really why I'm doing the soil test and when they come back we're gonna find out just what kind of farmer he was because he's farmed it since 2002 to 2001 2003 and on was the first years that he was here and I don't know I'm not impressed with all the uh, well I'm not impressed with the moss and I'm not impressed with those trees. I got Cody down the other end. He's running a brush hog. Uh, what he's doing is taking out the sticker bushes. And then what me and the boys are going to do when it stops raining here in a half an hour or so. We're going to come back with chainsaws and we're going to hack those trees right down out of there. All those trees. They're going to shade my corn and I can't have that. It's just not... Just not something I want to have happen. I want the, I want the corn to have the best... And, you know, because of the amount of money that I'm paying for rent on this place, I want to get the maximum out of it. And having those trees there is going to rob from the outside rounds of the fields. And that just needs to not happen. So, that's what's going on. Oh, look at that moss. It's just green with moss. Ugh. Terrible. Terrible. Hi. He's, uh, okay. It's running. I don't care about David's matter. Anyway, uh, yeah, what you want to do is after you get all your little, all your uh, dirt together, your soil together, you want to break it up as best you can. Now, this is a little bit moist. But you want to break up the dog turds and mix it up. Use a glove because the acids in your hands will change the, change the pH as well. I'm sure there's going to be somebody tell me I'm doing this wrong. But this is the way I've done it all my life. I'm not an agronomist. I don't claim to be. But I do claim to be a farmer, I guess. And this is... See, look how clay like that is. It's red. It's not clay soil. This is really a sandy soil. A sandy loam. Very nice. This is good ground. Okay, Joe. Hand me the thing. We've got it mixed up about as good as we're going to get it. It's almost borderline too damp to do. So what we'll do, we fill it up. There is a line. You put your name on there. And then there's a, a line that you fill it to, the little green line. And I'll put it a little bit more because there it is. And then you do this. Goodbye. I'm not that anal care enough to get it all out of there but here we go come Oops. on joe i won't put this in here before the what the hell okay so now we go on to the next one right right okay next one so what i did on this one was i actually made an hourglass an hourglass pattern so I zigzag one way turn around and zigzag the other way because of the size of the field so we're good now so we get over the top here bada bing bada boom and on to the next one what are you falling off okay, he's falling Gert, off our Hildra Strand I think I've got it right he says he found my channel three years ago I was watching George Saunders and he mentioned OLF was coming to the UK I searched to find out what you was doing since George seemed to think highly of you ended up with the Wi-Fi naked girl video okay Randy Scott he says that he found me in 2009 which I believe that's when it was and I like John Deere that's how I came across your channel the tug-of-war between the Oliver and the 5020 um, they were bald tires on the 5020. Uh, that Oliver did really good until we twisted the axle off of it. And that was my first experience with death threats from uh, YouTubers. Chief Matt Hammerschmidt finds my channel through the suggested video, which is where YouTube or Gobble My Balls puts uh, suggestions. If you're doing a search and you, you find one video and then over on the right, I believe it's the right hand side, it will suggest videos and that's how he has found me um, Yeah, as a loyal subscriber and he has been here for years and uh, yeah, welcome aboard. Jack Johnson found me when he was in middle school. So here I am, a senior in college. So. That is amazing. I know I have a lot of uh, subscribers that were young, um, about my children's age, and here they are, senior in college. Amazing. Yep. Glad you're still here. 
Josh Jacobs found uh, this channel uh, when I was harvesting downed corn with the grain platform, which isn't something too, pe too many people will do. I've done it. It runs a lot of material through the combine, um, but it gets the job done. Glenn Bell DC1 is an ex-firefighter. YouTube recommended your tractor on fire in the field video. I've been watching ever since. Now that's been 2011, so we're looking at nine years. Thanks, Glenn. Okay, so this one's kind of funny. Uh, Greif Unding. Ungen? Greif Ungen. Or Griff Ungen. I found your channel using these search terms in YouTube. Bald man with attitude burns tractor to the ground. P.S. Do not read my comment in the next video. Well, did you think you were going to get away with that? John Maynard. John Maynard says he found the channel by accident. The most realistic farming channel on YouTube. Well, I never thought that I would be the most realistic farming channel on YouTube, but as of late, uh, you watch the, the big ones. You know, I'm no longer the big one, and that's fine. I'm okay with that. I Okay, so... I am failing at finding negative comments, but I found one, and I knew of this person years ago because the story had been told, but Advan Der Velden, Advan Der Velden, Velden, uh, my name, I'm terrible with names. He's the guy that says comment on every video. I'm going to read his, and it will be the final one because I am yet to find a negative one, and I'm going to look all the way to the end because I think there's got to be one, but... Ad Van Der Velden, I found your channel on the advice of a 14-year-old boy. This one always came to help me on Saturdays. He was completely lyrical about OLF. He just wanted to be a tractor mechanic. You were his great example. My first video I saw was Tire Repair 71070 R38 on the 4960 just before it burned. Already eight years ago, and the little boy is now a young man who works for a contractor and works a lot on tractors and equipment. Thanks, OLF, for showing this boy the right way. And to be honest with you, I think there's more stories like this than I ever even know about. But this one floors me. It floored me four or five years ago when he told me this the first time. Uh, it's, it's, it's just amazing that this guy from New Jersey, USA could have a profound effect, a positive effect on a 14 year old kid that lives obviously in the Netherlands, uh, by the name Ad van der Velden. And, uh, I'm probably butchering his name, but I'm going to end it on this one. Um, because I've got too many minutes on here and this is turning into, into so much fun for me. I, I never really thought that there was so much outpouring love and the next question I'm going to leave up to you guys ask me a question and put it on there and I'll pick out the best ones for tomorrow's video thanks for watching please comment rate and subscribe don't forget that thumbs up button baby that'll make it all better